As I was walking into this FEMA camp, I could hear like people yelling and screaming. I'm not trying to scare you people. I'm just telling you the interpretation of the dream that I had. We were in a concentration camp. We were in a FEMA camp. I'll call it a FEMA camp. It was really dark. It felt like noon, but something happened. You know, volcano, Yellowstone, um, you know, meteor, whatnot. You know, the dark in the sky. Maybe the sun got blotted out. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so we were in a FEMA camp, and this this gray-haired guy with a Fu Manchu and a, you know, like a, uh, a military-type cover hat came came out, um, and uh, he said, uh, okay, it's time to execute the Christians. I was at this camp, this prison-type thing, and I realized last night that it was a FEMA camp. You know, there was no ceiling, no roof, nothing at this place. It was just brick and fence, but I'd gotten on top of one of the walls, and... They had captured me again, and this time they had put me into one of these cages with no roof. But I looked up, and I had seen this big, I want to I want to say it was a ship, but I seen this big ship type thing coming at me, and I knew that I was about to be saved. I knew that somebody was coming to save me. And these people descended down from it, and there was shooting and all kind of crazy stuff, and they had managed to rescue me. And on the way back, I had asked them, I said, are we going to heaven is this our way to heaven? Is, uh, am I being raptured or whatever? And um, they said, no, we're not going to heaven yet. It's not time to go to heaven yet. But we're going to a temporary place. And the the people that had captured me had followed us. And let me say, they, they these weren't people. They looked human. But in my spirit, I knew that they were a demon. They were Satan worshippers. We were driving and I saw these... Um, like military helicopters flying these big buildings and they were landing them and they had chain link fences that were high and, and with barbed wire around the top and they had all kinds of soldiers with guns and people were in them and I saw FEMA on the side of these containers that they were setting up and all of a sudden a, cl a cloud appeared in a perfectly clear blue sky. It started off and it was like a vortex cloud spinning around with the sound like of many rushing waters. The Bible says that God's voice sounds like many rushing waters. And it was like, and all of a sudden Jesus' face appeared in the cloud. And he said, this is the rapture, my children. Come with me. Come home. We ran to the back. We ran to the back of the um around to the back of the house. And as we was outside, I think the house was like they were white. You know, if you go if you go on YouTube or YouTube or um Google Images and look up FEMA camp, you'll see that they look like white tent. They look like little houses, and they have some windows on them. So he ran, he ran on. We ran on the dirt road, and across from the dirt road was this other base, and the fences of that base it had barbed wires. It had barbed wires. And the men that were coming out, they ran back in saying they're escaping, they're escaping. I found myself in a large camp that had huge barbed wire fences going around it, and uh, it was awful. It was like, like the Holocaust type of camp, you know, like a Nazi camp, like a concentration camp. Uh, the living conditions in this camp was absolutely disgusting. It was filthy. There was just like, like people's urine and feces everywhere like i think there was a couple of dead bodies lying around i saw soldiers walking around this camp with weapons machine guns type thing they were walking around and, and keeping the place in order and i'm sure i heard the term used fema camp fema camp i'm sure i heard someone say fema camp in my dream and i was like <laughs> this camp was like remote man it was like i didn't even know how to describe it uh like on a harbour, you know when you get a harbour where the boats come in and out? It was like, it had its own little bit of this harbour but next to the sea, so if you did escape you'd fall in the sea, like, you know, well you couldn't escape. The barbed wire was so tall, and there was like rows of barbed wire, and had barbed wire around the top, like razor blade, razor sharp barbed wire mixed around the top. And I had a, a dream about FEMA camps. He was telling the kids, he said, well, everybody's going to get tattoos and everybody's going to get chips and um, I could see the fence tall tall fence with barbed wire around it and then I could see this booth and um, there was about in this booth there was about four or five people in this booth, booth that had tan shirts and had helmets and um, heavily armed I was in a gymnasium or a school building I couldn't tell which one and it looked like we were all in a line in jail suits or we were ch we were chained. 
there was this Asian guy that was behind me and he was like a guard or something and he actually took my arm and my hand which was behind me well he pulled it behind me and he took it and he actually twisted my arm it was basically like I was in the you know like once again I was in the line but at this time it seemed like I was in and I was it seemed as though I was in an area like a facilitated area I seen a woman and she was being held by this other man and like and like they both seemed like they was you know from China or North Korea you know of that descent um, in this dream I was in a blue like a hospital gown with the back open and I had nothing on underneath and I'm in line and the line is going like you know in a movie theater when they put those um, velvet ropes to regulate the crowd where they want the crowd to go well this was hundreds of people and it was in and out and in and out and in and out and they were all dressed the same as me we were in this what appeared to be some kind of a facility a very sterile looking facility like um, a warehouse and um, I um, they I had in my hands what appeared to be clothing a lot of it like uh, blankets or clothes or whatever like I, I was it appeared that I was going to s different checkpoints to collect these items I was thinking that this dream represented um, the FEMA camp I guess I got in arrested and I went into a jail but it, I went to a prison but it wasn't like a regular prison and it's so crazy how they have the FEMA camps out now that a lot of people know about that you can actually Google about it. And I had, I was, when I was there, I was looking around, it did not look like a regular prison and it was a long line and I guess they was just getting people into it or whatever. And they placed me and other Christians inside of a prison cell, uh, but it didn't feel like jail as in the penitentiary or the um, correctional institution but it still feel like a special prison type area. I was actually with my children and we were underground and I was trying to find a way to escape because this was almost like a concentration camp, um, but it was underground. And one of the guys came up to me and figured out that, that we were trying to escape. And he grabbed me and then he put a gun in my head. And when I looked on the ground in different spots, I saw um, probably about the size of an eight by 11 sheet of paper. And it looked like, uh, I don't know how to describe it, like vaults in the ground. And um, it had writing on it, but at the top of it in big letters said Walmart. And on these little things, whatever you want to call it, I don't know, it, it had like this metal iron handle on the side. I woke up and I kind of laid there for a second. I grabbed my phone. I looked at the phone. It was 4.38 a.m. And I went, wow, okay, what does this mean? Well, I'm getting ready to go to my, I stand up out of the bed. I'm getting ready to go to my closet to pray, right? And I looked down at my phone. I'm getting a text message. I'm like, who is texting me at 4 something in the morning, right? So it's my little girl who is in her room, way across the hall in her own room. I'm like, well, why is she texting me? I'm going to read you the text. So mind you, the text comes over at 4.44 a.m. Let me see if I could uh, show it to you. You see that time? 4.44 a.m. And it's... it's where is it? Where is it? Right there. Okay. So it says, Mama, can we pray? I just had a dream about what uh, they did about army stuff. This is how the dream went. We was at school. It was weird. We had to go another week because it was summer. So you and me and Daddy was at the dollar store. Then the Navy cars came and put us in random us and random people, we ended up with other people and children. We woke up at the same time 
at the same time, my dream had something to do with some military people coming to get me. Get me. Her dream was the same thing, and she said, the text at 4.4 says, Mama, can we pray? I'm going to pray. She texts me, Mama, can we pray? The text come over at 4.44. Come on, people. Next thing I know, I am in, well, I want to say FEMA camp, and I say this because I found pictures of this later. And we were allowed to be outside for like 15 minutes every day, but it wasn't like green grass. It was a slab of concrete with um, a fence and multiple cameras facing in at us. And they took me to a desk where I guess you're checked in and out. Um, next thing I know, someone's telling me that I'm being released to go home under the supervision of a FEMA worker. And next thing I know, he walks up to me and injects me in the neck with something. And then I just fall. There are all these animals being given away in the middle of a carnival. In this carnival, I found my boyfriend, well then boyfriend. When I woke up from this dream, I told him about it. And this is really strange because he had a dream about being at a carnival while I was dreaming about this. And that's happened before, actually. We've had the same dream before at the same time. And there were these be big, beautiful mansions. But I could tell that the people that lived in the mansions were... I guess evil? I don't think. I just had a bad feeling about the people that live there. But the scene changed, and I was at some... It was almost like a fair with no rides, but they had all these games, like eating competitions. Like, they were trying to fatten people up. And after that, they were taken to these prisons, or I, I think it was a FEMA camp. It didn't say that. I never saw the word FEMA on it. But that's just what I felt that it was. It was a FEMA camp. It was a very nice, clean facility. Um, it was very kind of high tech. There were like glass walls and like different things like doors that open and close automatically. And it was just very high tech for a prison. Um, kind of futuristic almost. But um, they had people lined up that refused to take the Mark of the Beast. I don't know what the Mark of the Beast was. In my opinion, I think it will be the RFID chip. I don't know for sure, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, but the people who did not receive the mark, they were lined up and beheaded. Men, women, and children. I saw them all lined up, but they didn't seem afraid. They were doing it willingly. Um, and I thought that was interesting. Um, maybe the Lord was comforting them in that time. Or maybe they had been drugged. Um, I'm not sure. But um, they were being lined up and beheaded, and it was horrible. And after they were beheaded, their bodies were put on this conveyor-type table, almost like if you see it at an airport where your luggage comes around, almost on a conveyor like that, but it would go into a wall um, where the bodies were being like wrapped up and packaged to be put on a truck and shipped somewhere to be processed into food. And that is just, <laughs> I don't even have words. I was in a room with other veterans and some other people. Suddenly the room started thinning out. The doors locked, closed. I was left inside that room with just veterans. The room was lifted up. I found out later it was actually a connex that was lifted by helicopter. Flown over a prison camp. Clamshell doors on the bottom opened up. We were dropped into a prison camp on the top of a big pile of mattresses. And I could see dead bodies that rats were eating dead bodies. There were men inside the prison camp that were there to torment us, hit us and beat us and cause us to do things. I knew when I got into that camp during the dream, I knew there was no escape. I knew that death was on the way. I saw an angel of the Lord and he came to me and he started to talk to me about FEMA camp and he said to me that Obama is lying concerning FEMA camp. He said that Obama will tell the people that the FEMA camp is set up to help those that are in distress, uh, those who um, whose home have perished uh, for some reason for whatever cosmic effect uh, and, and devastation that is to come up on the land. And he said, whatever the reason is that people should not 
go to the FEMA camp. He also said that uh, FEMA is not, the word FEMA is not in existence. They only use this word FEMA uh, to tell people what FEMA means. But he said behind the word FEMA, he said it stands for beheading, ca beheading corporation camps. That is what he said FEMA is for. I had a dream that I was walking down a hallway in this barrack style building and I was carrying food with me and I walked into this room that was dimly lit and all of my family was in this room and you know I knew that we were being kept here and I didn't know why and I woke up and it didn't make a lot of sense to me you know I thought maybe it was just you know, something that I had heard, something that I had watched that caused me to dream about this, but, um, you know, it really stuck with me, and, you know, by the grace of God, I came across something called a FEMA camp, and they are popping up all over the U.S., and these FEMA camps, you know, they say it's for our benefit, you know, but I, I warn you, it's not for our benefit. Uh, we Americans were being shuffled like cattle into FEMA camps, and uh, the next thing I remember, there was a Russian standing over me and he was kicking me ruthlessly. And uh, right after that, shortly after that, I got up and I ran and I jumped off a cliff into a quarry filled with water and I swam to safety. And I was in the streets and the streets were filled with a mob mentality in America here. I was in this room. And it kind of looked like, you know, back when Hurricane Katrina happened and, you know, people were living in the silver domes and stuff like that. Well, in the dream, I saw a lot of people, but um, we were all waiting in this room and everybody had like little blankets and stuff like in this room. And I think, I'm not sure, I don't remember, but... I think people went days without eating and stuff like that, but we were just like, all in this room and it was like a lot of people. That's all I can remember is a lot of people there. And then it was this guy or whatever, these guys, they came in and then they took me away. I don't know where I went after, but they took me away. And instantly FEMA camps popped in my mind. I said, I know where I'm at. I thought to myself, I know where I'm at. And uh, I said, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna do that. But then I, I don't know if I woke up or I actually made it out of there. I don't remember making it out of there. I don't remember making it out of the FEMA camps. There was only one table, a small table. And at that table sat a very large, mean looking woman with a uniform on. This woman had power over everyone in that camp to determine who would live and who would die. It looked like a military camp. And to my left, there was a wall, a very tall wooden wall. But on that wall, there were bodies hanging. Nonetheless, these were all martyrs, people that had been martyred in this camp. And um, it was these two people standing outside of a building. And the building, I got the understanding that the building was a place, it wasn't a concentration camp, but it was a place that they held people before they sent them off to concentration camps. And um, so this guy and the girl, they worked there. But the girl, she just did like small things involving um, that place. And the guy, he was actually in charge of like interrogating and he actually had killed some people. So the guy began to tell the girl, he was like, I have to do what I have to do. I just have to do what I have to do. And the girl was like, what is that? What is that? Interrogate them to death? And uh, you could tell she was really upset and she walked off. And um, the guy, another guy walked over to the guy that was still standing there and it ended up being his brother. And they began talking and you could just tell that they were, they were evil and they had no like compassion in their hearts for the lives of these people. They had no remorse for taking the lives of these people. And then that was the end of my dream.